Hello, this is Angelique, and you're listening to We're Booked Up, a segment of the Gaston Speaks podcast wherein Kendall, Andrew, and I discuss books. For today's episode, we're going to talk about Fuzz, When Nature Breaks the Law by Mary Roach, a nonfiction book about animal management and conservation. But first, what have we been reading or watching? So for book club, um, we read something called The Golden Couple, which was not great. But we read uh, Demon Copperhead, and I would, was dreading reading this book because it's like 558 pages. Y'all know how I'm about. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't finish a book. It was absolutely jaw-droppingly fantastic. Um, there's a reason it won the Pulitzer Prize. It's based off of basically David Copperfield, but in an America, Americana, um, Appalachian uh, set and uh, mountains of Virginia. And it is horrifying and terrifying, but hopeful and it, you probably see people you know in these stories. Um, and so anyway, I would recommend it. Like I said, I, I had been dreading. I was like, I, I got to start this early, and I did. So I'm never going to make it through this book, but I'm glad I did. It was it was worth the read. So wow. that's my recommendation. I also saw um, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, which is the new Martin Scorsese movie. And it is, again, three, hour, three and a half hours long, not an easy sit. Um, it's about a really horrifying time in our history. But uh, another great movie from the master. So I would recommend those two. Well, look at you just I know. spitting gems. Because normally I'm like, I don't know, I watch Golden Girls again. <laughs> so this was, I actually had something. So go for it. I'm sorry. I'm excited. Um, let's see. What have I been watching? I have, I've been watching um, What We Do in the Shadows. Oh. So Ooh. funny. Not for kids. No. Yeah. Not for kids at all. No, no, no. Um, and... What I've been watching when I have my kids around. Uh, we watched Elemental. That was super cute. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, Haunted Mansion. That was cute. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. I think we have both of those here at the library, too. So if you like to check them out, Disney Plus, or check them out at the library. Yeah. And then um, I started the Sarah J. Moss, like, series. Oh, the big one. Um, okay. A Court of Thorns and Roses, Roses and Something Thorns, like Something like that, yeah. one of those things. It's cute. It's fantasy. Um, I'm engaged enough that when Libby took it back, I, I found it on my sh- reshelving cart yesterday, and I like took it and checked it out. So awesome. Going to read it. Nice. Nice. All right. What about what are you? What are you reading? What are you watching? I read this book, and I watched, what was it called? Car Crash. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I did watch some of those. Oh, gosh. Because, yeah. I don't know. Um, I watched a Netflix show. What was it called? Uh, the Imperfects. Uh, it's about this group of people who went through some genetic um, uh, experiment. And it changed them. Like, one became... They became, like, mythical creatures, basically. Ooh. And they have to find a way to be unbecome mythical creatures. Why? Um, because it's uh, there's downsides. Like oh. one person turns into a chupacabra, <laughs> yeah. And um, I found out after, <laughs> yeah. Not funny, but it's fun. I mean, bad, very bad chupacabra. <laughs> it's basically, he's basically a werewolf with spines. And um, but aren't only like sheep in danger in that case? <laughs> like, do chupacabras attack people? This one does. Oh, occasionally. Anyway, I found out after I watched it that it had not been renewed, so that sucked because I liked it. But it makes sense, though, because one of the actors is actually in another Netflix show that's really big. (laughs) So, yeah. I I hate that when, like, there'll be some times where, like, I've I've watched the first season of something, the second season started, I've, like, recorded it or I've put it on the back burner, and then I hear, oh, it's gotten canceled. So I'm like, do I watch the second season and leave on a cliffhanger? Because you know it was cliffhanger. You know, there was there was not going to be, like, a conclusion there. That's what happened with me and Santa Clarita died. I still haven't watched the last season of that. <gasps> it's ended on a – okay, well, yeah. I'm not going to watch the second season now. The first season was good. I liked it. Yeah, people liked it. Yeah. It's very funny. It's a good show. I like Timothy Oliphant and pretty much yeah. anything. So mm-hmm. Yeah. All so right. Josh Duhamel. Wait, is it, is it Josh Duhamel? No. no. <laughs> it's just because they're, inter- they're kind of interchangeable in my brain. Okay, Except they're okay. not. Like, yeah. Dylan McDermott and Dar- Dermot, Dermot Mulroney or whatever. Yeah, they Dermot look the Mulroney. same, the same name. Do they look the same? I don't Mark, know if they look the same. They look Mark, very close. Marcus gets them confused yeah, 100% of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Funny. All right, so on to the book, which was Fuzz, When Nature Breaks Law. I'm going to read the synopsis. Which is going to be very short because it's a nonfiction. All right. Named a best book of the year by Washington Post, Smithsonian, NPR, and more, 
Fuzz is another hilarious globetrotting classic from Mary Roach. When it comes to jaywalking moose, vandal gulls, or mugging macaques, Roach finds that humans are more often the problem and the solution. Combining wildlife biology, human behavior, and conservation genetics with a motley cast of animal attack forensic investigators, bear managers, and laser scarecrows, Fuzz offers hope for compassionate coexistence in our ever-expanding human habitat. That's a very good description. I liked that. It was accurate. I also put this on my to-read list, but that's not what I thought this book was going to be about. I thought it was about bees, oh, and it's not about bees. That would and be I was buzz, like, not fuzz. But, I mean, <laughs> bees are kind of, like, fuzzy. They are. They are. They're fuzzy, and they have the, you ever seen, like, the bee butts? Yeah. Where they, like, get their heads stuck in. They have cute bee butts. And look, like, on the front, there are bees on this picture. There's also a giant bear. <laughs> Maybe that's not a bee. Maybe that's a fly. I think it's a fly, Kendall. Okay, just kidding. Because it's could... like rotten food because they they go through the trash. Oh, my God. You're right. No, you know what? It's bees. If that makes you feel happy that it's bees, it's bees. That's okay. Okay. okay I'm okay. okay. I can be wrong. I mean, it was, a, it was a good description of exactly what happens in the book. That's what it's about. All right. Ratings. I would give it a... Three, three and a half. It's not like my, I mean, it's not something I would never normally read, but, um, and there were parts that got, it got a little re- repetitive, you know, kind of, you kind of, and there were parts where there's a lot of like facts and I don't, you know, <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> statistics, facts. but, um, it's really interesting. I think everyone needs to read it because it's, this is a problem that's never going to go away. And, um, she is hilarious. And and has a she she blends the facts well with other things that keep your attention. So it's a, it's a very good for me a three and a half is a pretty good rating. So yeah, that would be really it's a good book. I gave it a three. Sometimes when I was reading the more boring chapters, I was like, this is a two, this is a two and a half. But then like it, she would rebound. I, I it's not my most favorite nonfiction book I've ever read, and I wish that I'd listened to it as an audio book. Yeah. I think some of the jokes would have been funnier. Um, but yeah, no, uh, three. I'm going to stand by three. Probably between three and a half and a four for me. I really liked it. I liked her as a writer. If you're into like science and stuff, those facts are not going to be boring to you. Yeah. We're just librarians. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. No, I think the facts are interesting and I like the sciencey stuff. It's just, I, I need more time to digest the mm-hmm. information. Like there's so much information in one, even just a paragraph, mm-hmm. like learning people's names, the like their personalities, what they do, why they're called what they're called in their title. Like and all of like the sciencey stuff gets all mixed in in like seven sentences. And it's like, oh my brain. Well and then it's like like the chapter where they're talking about like the bird killings. It was like, and then we jump to this time period. Where they try yeah. to do this, and then we jump to 1950s Texas or whatever, and so it, it, sometimes the, you, you got to keep up because because you're bam, you're just done the next. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of information. But I also appreciated that it wasn't like an 800 page like, you know no. what I mean? Like, there's a reason yes. it was less than two 300 pages. So she did. Tr- I think she tried. Yeah, it was a lot to take in. But I think that was part of her purpose to make it more digestible for people. All right. Are we ready for questions? Let's yeah, do let's it. go. So we've heard it. I actually already answered this oh, one. God, Did I'm you sorry. enjoy Mary Roach as a narrator? Would you read one of her other books? I would read one of her other books, but as an audio book. I feel like I would... In- to me, I digest a lot of this information easier in podcast form. Mm. And maybe if I could break it up over chapters, like I can listen to this chapter this week and then come in and talk about it with somebody else. Like that's what I really enjoyed about this book because I'd be reading it and I'd be like, oh, I can't wait to talk about this. But now I've forgotten what this specific detail was because yeah, it's 200 pages later and <laughs> there's a million more of those little facts. So, Yeah, I like the audio. That would be – I actually don't do well with fiction audiobooks because there's always like they're trying to do different voices or whatever. But I actually do really well with nonfiction audiobooks. Same. Um, that's how I digest most of my nonfiction um, and I, I kind of went off on the like the celebrities who read their own stories, you know, like Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, Bossy Pants, you know, uh, Betty White has some really good ones, by the way, which is it's kind of also hard to hear those now. But um, but yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, I definitely um, uh, Sandy would love our administrative assistant who hauls bodies on the side would love stiff. Um, I think so. Too. Yeah. But golf, golf definitely looked interesting. But yeah, I think I think audio. I would do it as not. I, if I, I, I like can, if I can do Bill Nye the Science Guy undeniable on audiobook, I can definitely do this. Yeah. Oh, what about you, Angela? I liked her. I liked her writing. I'm not much of an audiobook person because when people talk, I tend to like phase out. 
I can't help it. Extroverts versus the introvert. So <laughs> can't help it. So audiobooks don't work for me. I'm not normally an auditory person. Like if you're teaching oh, really? me something, so yeah, it's it, this is a skill I've learned. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'd read it one of. I'd probably try Stiff. I want to do Stiff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I heard that one was really good. I really enjoyed the way she wrote this book because I liked how she like padded the facts with like little anecdotes and stuff like that and her footnotes were funny and she's yeah. just well, it's funny she's a good voice the two nonfiction books you read this one and then the um in the dream house mm-hmm. footnotes yeah the Isn't footnotes this were the so third important. footnote book that we've read that we oh the, the other foot the other one's good omens good omens was, yeah yeah this is the second not i i felt like the best material was in the footnotes i think most of the pictures i took of like the well, funny the, of the of the part i love mm-hmm. Were the footnotes because they were just hilarious. I, know, I was yeah. like, don't make them, like, just stick them up in the beef. Like, <laughs> you know, stick it up in the regular chapter. But yeah. All right. Next question. Um, what did you learn that surprised you about a specific animal? Um, did this book change how you think about certain animals? I. Okay, so I'm going to say I can't remember any right now because my brain just went blank, but I have a gazillion notes I'll go through at the end and we'll find out the like all the random ones. I can't say animal, but I can say I don't know if I want to go to India so much anymore. <laughs> like they've got jaguars that just eat people or leopards, leopards excuse me, leopards. leopards and the monkeys that yeah. just Harass steal you. from you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Scare you until you fall off the building. And then the things yeah, that they or drop like things on like heavy yeah. stones on you. And like, then what's the animal that like they use to guard because the monkeys Langers? Yeah. Yeah. But they're also terrified. They yeah. like hiss at this <laughs> that, that very roach and I'm like, yeah. Well I'll be honest with you, it's like you know how there's like people talk about Australia, New Zealand, how there's That's nothing in New Zealand that kills you, but exactly everything in Australia kills you. It's like I'm going to New Zealand. Yeah. Yes. Not Australia. So do I want to visit India? Yes. Food, mm-hmm. culture, mm-hmm. clothes, history. history. Mm. I'm there for it. But I don't know if I can go anymore because I'm now terrified about all of the animals <laughs> that live there. And they're just... Well, to be fair, the man-eating leopards are mostly in this one area. The man-eating ones, but yeah. that doesn't like 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 there's still other leopards. Yeah, but they're usually in like rural areas, so where yeah. it's a little bit deserted. I, I mean, the the guy also did say in one of them that's only like 900 monkey bites a year, which is actually less than something I mean, else that bites a, a year. It's like yeah. millions and millions of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, it's India, yeah. You yeah, got yeah. Like, like it's not... still. I don't want the little whatever stealing crap from me. I would cuss out a monkey. <laughs> Just say it. It would. They not would be cuss you out back. Yeah, in like, their own language. Yeah. yeah. Throw yeah. something at you. Oh, feces, probably. Yeah, too. probably. <laughs> <laughs> Learning that the birds, oh, what bird was it? Is real. That's really good with aiming their poop. The seagulls. The seagulls. seagulls. Oh, I the, knew that. That, that, was, that, was... that one footnote <laughs> about the girl who got it right in her mouth. Oh God. That, okay, but that was gross. That, <laughs> that was. was so... What was the other one? Like the emus are good at hiding or something, or they're really fat. I knew they were fast, but it. You know, emus do like the dancing type thing, but they were talking about how like they would they would they blend in really well, and I was like, "It's an emu. How does it blend well into the, anything?" The machine gun. I I put that in my notes. I think that because that was the emus uh, were the um the emu war? the military like yeah. came oh, yeah, out with yeah. the gu- with the machine guns to try to get them. They, get <laughs> they were like clearly the the bullets are just going through their feathers. <laughs> like they won. <laughs> they had like really tough skin and yeah yeah. yeah. There's this the emu man. There's this, uh, side note, there's this, uh, if you want to learn more about the emu war, there's this um, series on YouTube called uh, Puppet History, where they just do history with, like, a puppet. It's very funny. And they did one on the emu war, and it's, it's not for kids, so don't watch your kids. <laughs> That's good to know, because I was Parental like, I can advisory. show my kids. No, okay. don't show no. your kids. <laughs> okay. Um, so the one thing I learned that I didn't know, and it isn't about animals, it's about kidney beans. I didn't know they were toxic <gasps> if you didn't cook them yeah. thoroughly. Yeah. I didn't know that either and i'm thinking about do you like, feel vindicated in your hatred for beans now a little <laughs> now i'm thinking okay, about well, if you it get canned beans are already cooked to the point where they're yeah, not like, yeah yeah but, but i'm thinking about all the people who are like oh no i soak my own beans every night or yeah. like because like it is a thing right now like i've seen the trend where you like roast your beans and like crumble them up over food that japanese like the show that was yes like, they sent a hundred people yeah, 100 with like, intestinal right. yeah. distress yeah. to the hospital yeah and i'm just now thinking all the people accidentally like poisoning poisoning themselves, themselves. yes yeah. but yeah as a non-bean eater <laughs> <laughs> we just cut through with the mediterranean diet it was like you should eat vegetables and beans and that's it <laughs> well eat <candy laughs> that's why beans. i look like me oh uh, because yeah. i eat none of those things oh uh, 
I'll eat those things and more. <laughs> yeah, like I like beans. I just want it like next to my quesadilla. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's my you know. Anyway, I'm still gonna eat beans. I like like chili and stuff. So I'm still gonna yeah. eat them. But and again, I'm gonna like eat canned. <laughs> yeah, well, and most people do like the can that you rent. Yeah. Like those are gonna be cooked. You should be fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm learning to like them, and I'm not going to stop eating them. But to know that they're like on the top ten list, toxic beans. I know, right? Of the what was it? The was it the USDA? US. Something. Probably. Yeah. I'm uh, too many acronyms. Lots too many acronyms. acronyms. I have forgotten everything. Like anyway. it also shows you that like, and they talk about all these these little organizations that like no one cares. There's one guy who's Aww. the the cougar counter. You know, like that's it. There's yes, just one guy to tend. When he dies, I know. It's I know. like that was my favorite chapter, by the way. But yeah, it that was a really yeah, good it was a one. good chapter. But yeah, it's like so they we we fund these things, which I'm, I'm happy that the government is funding these things because it is important that we learn to live with our environment. But then it's like we don't you, sustain them we don't very sustain well. them, and we don't, we underfund. Well, there's a shocker. We underfund <laughs> them. Um, but yeah, it's like yeah, I thought about that. I'm like, if he if he just like kills over one day, there's no there's no one to count the cougars in mm-hmm. California, and they are, you know, th- there's human interaction. Although I'll. I also found love that they talked about how ninety like all the times people say I saw there are all these cougars. It's usually a lot less the coyotes. Yeah, like well, they'll they'll sit here like fifteen or something. It's only like one or two. Right, right. And, oh, and isn't that so, that was they, that? They, they exaggerate the amount yeah, of yeah. like predator animals there are because I guess because of fear or whatever. I you took it to exaggerate. I was like, those are some really efficient <laughs> where it's too. It made me think of that scene in the Patriot where Mel Gibson is pretending to be like a whole like battalion of people. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he's really just him and his son in the woods running between guns. Yeah, yeah. See, but, but yeah, I, I but figured that's what was going on with the coyotes. But also, the guy had a good point about the coyotes because he was saying it's not actually that they are appearing more. It's just that now that there are the cameras, they're captured like yeah. on film yeah. more. Yeah. Also, another thing I I think I knew, but maybe I just learned in the book, and I just like retconned myself um the dingo attack in australia with the baby well it's real yeah it was real. i thought it was in the 90s apparently it was in 1980 but maybe because the joke was still around in the 90s yeah, yeah. 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 yeah yeah i was telling brandy about it and um she wanted to know what dingoes like looked like and we looked it up and there was this video of dingoes like harassing people on the beach in australia <laughs> like a dingo like went right up to a woman and bit her in the butt <laughs> Yeah, I am never going to Australia, and I am everything though, can kill you there. That's yeah. the never going to India. They also now. have those big spiders that are actually completely harmless, like the Huntsman. Yeah, they're completely harmless, but they are literally like the size of a no. They also have like the really poisonous spider, like the funnel web spider that's just about that big. And if you find it in your house, you're supposed to call somebody so you can come get it because yeah. they're that dangerous. Anyways, I'm pretty sure. It's Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I stress enough about like brown recluse. I'm like, are you a brown recluse spider in my house? Yeah, yeah, no. Copperheads, like, yeah, I mean, but they're nothing compared to some of these. I walked into my living room the other day, and there was a, one of those big wolf spiders just oh, standing I there. Those things, they're, they're mean. They come after you. I got them out, though. Good for you. All right, next question. What was your favorite part of the book, passage, quote, event, fact, or least favorite? So mine was the cougar chapter. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just, I just found it hilarious. And I was trying to find, there was a quote I particularly liked. Oh, where she's talking about how they um they they zigzag sweeping right and left, uh to to try to um to lose something, and she was like, <laughs> she goes, I tried this on the street near my office. <laughs> After a young man passed in reek of body axe spray, I let him turn the corner and disappear from view, then wait a few minutes by zigzagging hound dog style. I was able to track him in his destination, a cheesesteak place on the next block. <laughs> that was so funny. And then, um, oh, gosh. Oh, the other one I can't say because it's a bad word. Oh, the um, bear one? No, no, no. It's, it's the same thing of, as the, um, the uh, it has an, an anatomical thing that I can't talk okay. about. I'll tell you guys after the recording. And then I love this one about Compound oh, W. Oh, the monkey one? No, no, no. It was in the cougar chapter. It was in the cougar chapter. Uh, but I was talking about because it... Because of its anatomy, by this he means it's. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was that. clever. And, and then funny. there was this one of the footnotes was talking about the um, the development of Compound W. Mm-hmm. It was like, did the makers of the work product removal Compound W realize this when they named their product? I don't know because Prestige Brands, which owns Compound W, doesn't return calls. Their online media inquiry form is a dead end, and they're not on Twitter. But while we're on the topic of inappropriate names, let's consider Prestige Brands because there are some other Prestige Brands: Fleet Enemas, Nix for Lice, Beano for Flash. 
flatulence, URI stat, or Eurostat, Nostrilla decongestant, Summer's, never mind, mm, Boil Ease, Effredent Ditcher Cleaner, and Boudreaux's Butt Paste. <laughs> That's prestige brands. And I don't, I just, that was, that was. That Boudreaux's butt paste actually works pretty good on diaper rash. Okay, see, that's there important. You go. Okay. I'm glad you said diaper rash. I was like, where are we going with this? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get Our personal. audience, yeah, exactly. But anyway, those those were the three that I took pictures of just because I thought they were cute. But the cougar chapter in general, the guy who chases the cougars was just interesting. I thought he was interesting too. Yeah. He it, tries to hand her scat. <laughs> I know, yeah, he just yeah. It up with his bear. <laughs> and then he's like, hmm, and drops it. He owns a home he's never been to, like an apartment he's never been to or whatever. I don't know. He's just something about that chapter. After that, it was downhill for me because that one was my favorite. Yeah, I also wrote about the, um, I can see a movie scene with the author trying to track a person with Axe body spray just zigzagging across <laughs> the street to find the scent. <laughs> um I'm seeing a lot of these, like, uh, who did I like? Um, I also liked Hubert and Mabel Fring, the albatross couple. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they were funny. They were funny. Uh, the bird one was kind of funny, too, just because it's so futile, I think was the funny yeah, part of it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter what we do. On July 26, 2005, the space shuttle Discovery hit a turkey vulture. Page 190. Great opening sentence. Not so great for the turkey vulture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... I, I'll have to go through my notes at the end. Oh, I actually thought that the macaques chapter was kind of boring, but. Oh, with the monkeys? Yeah. Yeah, it was because it followed it after it the leopard so chapter, which was long. was really, really long. The leopard chapter was a lot more interesting. It was actually not really funny. It was more. Yeah, it was really serious. It was kind of very serious, but it was yeah. a lot more interesting. Yeah, the monkeys were kind of boring. Yeah. Sorry, I just have so many, like, I might just have to go through the. Oh, I'm. Uh, I might just have to go through this at the end because it's all kind of all over. That Sorry, works. it's not like tailored to your questions. What about you? Um, I'm trying to find this one quote because I really like the tracking thing too. But there's this other one. It's just like this little throwaway. I think it's in later. There were a lot of those. So yeah. many. Yeah. Where she's talking about like self-driving cars and how she was going to contact somebody. And the way she said it was really funny to me. There was one where she was talking about the deer. And she's like, you're actually supposed to not slow down. You're supposed to just plow okay. through the deer. Okay. And she's like, yeah. what is wrong with you that you would do that? Like, she's there, she's like, that's what you're supposed to do. But she clearly didn't endorse it. Okay. So here's here's a little. Okay. Let's ask the most rational driver of, driver of all, the autonomous car. If it slams its brakes and does it only so you, when no one's. Does it only do so when no one's tailgating? If it swerves, does it only do so only if the path is clear? If either criterion is missing, will it go ahead and run straight over a beagle or a skunk? And here's the one I re- part I really liked. I posed these questions to Google Waymo's self-driving car media relations person, but she refused to have relations with me. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. It is interesting how many people she contacted. Yeah. Just she just well, went even all out. in in India in the the monkey chapter. Because I can't say that word, it just it doesn't come out. Anyway, um, there was like there were two or three people who just would not. It was like impossible to hunt them down. Uh, one of my favorite scenes in the monkey chapter, I think it was the monkey somewhere in one of the chapters where she's actually in India. The guy's like, um, I have wrote it down. It's the the military guy is like, oh, you know, you need to go see um, Ishwar Singh, and like he were like refused to like answer any questions. He just kept saying, go to Ishwar Singh. Um, oh my gosh. Well, in that case, too, I think it's because in India, the animal relationship to humans, there's a lot of sacred and religious part, you know, so there, there's there's a another layer to it. Oh, but um, I just, oh, there it is. Uh, she's, um, her humor is on point when she's interviewing one government officer who's trying to pass responsibility by telling her repeatedly to discuss with Ishwar Singh. And she writes, do not press repeatedly because <laughs> she's re- uh, making a callback to when she was in the elevator waiting for the and she's in the lobby waiting for the elevator. And the button says, do not push <laughs> press repeatedly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I love that the two government agencies are just passing the buck. <laughs> it's very government. <laughs> very government. <laughs> I like how she just kind of like makes sure to like humanize every person that she talks to in some way, yeah. even in some little way. Like the guy who worked for the sanitation landfill who walked away when she called it a dump. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, you said dump. It's a four letter word. <laughs> anyway. All right. I'm We're... curious to get through your questions before I go through all okay. my like randomness. So I don't have a lot of questions apparently. Oh no, I marked some in the back that I liked. 
That's right. It had a reading guide. This would yeah. be a good book club book. I think I might recommend it in my book club. I think it might be interesting. I never even looked at the reading guide. Yeah. I guess it's probably because I finished this <laughs> <laughs> three seconds About ago. Three seconds before we started right, uh, recording. Um, Roach comes across a number of highly unusual job titles throughout her travels. Monkey capturing team, certified danger tree assessor, and human bird scare are just the tip of the iceberg. Which unconventional job did you find most appealing? Which would you least like to do? Ooh, that's a good question. Um... I do not want to be on the monkey catching team. Mm-mm. That's just that's just something about that. No. No. I kind of want to be on the team that blows up the trees. Mm-hmm. That could be fun. Because you're not actually killing them. No, you're not. Like I liked that. That was a good chapter too. Yeah, yeah I liked that chapter, chapter too. Mm-hmm. So he, they talked about how you're in the redwood forest, and a lot of people don't realize that the trees they're surrounded by are dead trees, but that the dead trees are necessary because they provide homes for wildlife. So they actually like return them into like wildlife trees. And so I don't know that I want to be the person scaling the tree. No. Because no, I'm no, terrified no. of heights, even though that one guy was like, I'm not afraid of heights. It seems like a problem you'd only have one time. <laughs> was his response when she oh, asked yeah. him. Anyway, um, but yeah, I would. I would do that one, and I also think I do not want to be a mouse researcher. Mm. No. no. Or the people who have to re con like make the um the what are they called effigies? Oh out yeah. Out of like old, well, some of those are like, probably fake. There's taxidermy. Yes, but I don't want to be the person who has to taxidermy anything. Oh, I want to be the person who is putting the um, deer butts um, on the side of the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was fun, yeah. <laughs> See, and that one I took to heart because I actually have a pack of deer that live in our woods next to our house. Mm-hmm. Now, I have to spray this very harmless mint spray on the plants or they'll eat them. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, I love like seeing them graze in the background or whatever, and so I'm always worried someone's going to hit one of, one of my deer. I don't know why they're my deer, but they're on like my property. So no, that's good. It's, they're yours. Yeah. So that one I took to heart. I'm like, oh, I hate when I see a hit deer. It drives, yeah. It's just, it's just. Don't go down 85 ever. No. Well, I don't. Yeah. There's like two right now. And it's funny because I don't mind. Like, I'm never going to do it, but I understand people who go deer hunting because a lot yeah. of times they do that because it is overpopulated and yeah. it can harm mm-hmm. them and harm us. And I'm like, as long as there's someone doing that, I'm okay with them thinning out that that particular herd. I don't want to do it, but something about getting hit with the car. I think a Rory Gilmore and the deer hit the car. I put that in my You notes. did? Oh, gosh. Sorry. We won't do it. We won't go down a rabbit hole. But um, I, yeah, something I about that is just tragic because there, it, there's no yeah, humanity to it deer? where there is some and some of those other things. Anyway, I'm sorry. I went off on yeah. a soapbox. Um, side note, I actually met somebody from South Africa who talked about how baboons actually break into homes there. So it's not just macaques. Yeah. <laughs> it's baboons. Well, I mean, remember, monkeys are highly Everywhere. intelligent. Yeah. Okay. A fun fact. The bears who break into the home and don't leave any trail yeah, except yeah. for the fridge. That was good. Oh, I love that. And the fact so that, by funny. the way, the bears are not violent because we think we really have that, that they're actually, they really don't want to be anywhere near you. Mm-hmm. But they love to raid your fridge. Yeah, what a Winnie the Pooh. They're like moment. a drunk college kid, like raiding the fridge and then sneaking out. Like I love it. What what job did you want to do or not do? It was mentioned in the bird chapter about farmers who hire people, like college students, which I'm not, to like go on ATVs around their farm scaring birds away. <gasps> That'd be fun. I would want to do that. Yeah. Do you know what I thought of? Hmm. All I could think about was Doc Savage and his little ATV, <laughs> <laughs> like coming up to save the girl. Uh, and I was like, that's an appropriate place for an ATV <laughs> is scaring birds. Send that just a picture of that page to James Patterson. <laughs> and be like, this is how you do it. Like, yeah. That that would be fun because then you're not. Hard Harming anything. Yeah, you're just scaring them and away. And it's kind of fun. You just drive around and just scream and yell and be funny. I like the fact that um, they talked about back in history that they used to have little kids do that. Yeah. But then they would have to have an adult attendant with them. And it's like, why not just do the adults? No, that made no, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have the adults. It's a little away. kid's job. Adults can't do it. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to be the adult watching the little kids. <laughs> just around right? scraping the kind of what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be paid for it. Is the exactly. point exactly? <laughs> All right. Um, what did you think of the ending? What do you think of uh, the the uh, the research into gene drives? That's a complicated issue. Yeah. I don't know. So, like, part of me, the sciencey part, that's like, yes, I really want to see what it looks like to, when you are able to 
influence something to this degree. And then there's a lot of like philosophical questions about should we be doing this? How much do we like? Is it like our responsibility to like do yeah, it, not yeah, yeah. do it? Just because we can doesn't mean we should. I'm, I, yeah. You guys have opinions on either? No, I'm kind of like you. I, it was, it's, it's, it's kind of like, it, it's a mix of, the, you know, the Golden Girls at Magenta. It's all the colors mixed up together. It's like, that's what Blanche used to call it. Because you're right, there is, there is some purpose to it. But then she spent the whole time talking about how humans have always failed. Really, we're the ones who have failed to adapt. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, that's kind of the point of this. That's an interesting Which take. I felt like that was, okay, that was, maybe that's not what you guys, that's what I got no. out of it was like, it didn't matter what we do. We have, not in all cases, like the trees and mm-hmm. where they, they don't destroy them and it, and it actually saves other things and stuff like that. That's kind of cool. But for a lot of these cases, you get to the end and there there's still not a, a resolution. Yeah. We have failed to deal with the monkeys in India or the jaguars killing people or the scaring of birds doesn't <laughs> actually scare them away. Yeah. Uh, so to me, it's like, why are we going to keep, is this doomed to fail and what harm does it do in the process? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So... That was so one of the frustrations I was having with this book was like I was like three quarters of the way through it. I'm like, she just keeps giving me information and I don't know her perspective on it Mm. yet. I just feel like she's given me just like this huge amount of like raw research. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, but why? Like, why are we like, what are you wanting to say? Like what or, or what conversation are you wanting to happen out of this? And a little bit, I kind of got it towards the end. She was talking about, um, gosh, now I can't remember. She said the two things. It was on 289. Um, Coexistence and biocontrol. I think that's kind of what her aim is. But did you guys get a sense of what she, like, why did she write this book? I I feel like a few times she mentioned that humans are the cause of their own problems when it comes to a lot of animals. Mm-hmm. And that's like part of the point of the book, like like the stoats and the rabbits in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And then she mentioned some the uh, what were they mongooses in Hawaii that were diurnal, where they're going after rats that are nocturnal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the 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 first chapter about the bears. If people just lock up their dang garbage. You know, it would keep the like they keep coming back because people aren't following the rules, I and mean, people follow the rules. So yeah, it's talking about how when animals break the law, but I think that's the joke is that animals can't break a law. Yeah, we cre- we try to create laws and expect wild nature to to follow it, and it, like I said, to me, it's it's that we continually fail at at actually doing that. I think she was just trying to get across the um the um idea of coexistence to coexist as best as we can with all these animals i know that in some cases it you're gonna have to try to find a solution like the monkeys Mm -hmm. in these all these public places harassing people mugging people yeah yeah scaring people until they fall off a building snatching babies out of arms to trade for food yeah Yeah. like that's awful yeah or like the elephants that are crashing houses oh i loved the the elephant chapter that's really when i forgot about that yeah yeah i loved that i love elephants too i knew they're me (laughs) so Think, but are they mean or are we in their way? Like, I think there's a point yeah, to that, too, that we put ourselves in the way and then we blame the animal Yeah, when they were there before we were. As for the whole gene drive things, all I can think about is, like, movies like Jurassic Park yeah. mm-hmm. and Mimic and how um, I, I put, like, a quote from Jurassic Park, life finds a way. So what's so funny yeah. to me is that, okay, so the two lessons I kind of thought would be, um, one, humans need to secure their trash, like and really? two, what? Like, really? Yeah, it's not that seriously. Hard. And then two, uh, that one guy um, who kept saying to a reporter, natality over mortality, like the idea that even if you kill off some of the population, it actually makes the rest of the population stronger and yeah. more. Um, what's the word where you produce more? Mm. Proliferate. Pro- sure, let's go productive. Pro- pro- yeah, proliferate. Yes, yeah. yes. Anyway, prolific. 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 That's yeah. the word. Proliferate. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but um, any when uh, I also kept thinking of life finds a way, yeah. and then it made me think of that other guy with his natality over mortality. mortality. And also, she makes a really good point about gene drives of how, like, the scientists, they want to do it to solve an issue that is current. And then, but then she points out that when when other people decide who the pests are, 
mm-hmm. they're going to go after different things. Like right now it's just about island conservation, but what about some bottom line somewhere mm-hmm. is going to make them go after something else? She like re she also mentioned that kind of thing when she was talking about the forests and how um right now deer are like reshaping forests and stuff yeah. like that yeah. and it's like well, people want to get rid of the deer population for that, but before the deer, there was another animal yeah, doing moa, it. Yeah, the moa, I think. I've never yeah. heard of a moa. It's, like it's, a, it's yeah. extinct, so yeah. Yeah, That's that why. would explain yeah. why, but we're trying to like capture this moment after the moa, but before the deer, yeah. and it's like- which wasn't the original anyways. Yeah. yeah, like why are we, we just have to like evolve with it, I guess. Well, she yeah. also made the point too about how like, okay, so we use the- uh, poison to get rid of the rats because they were literally harming our soldiers and and you know whatever. Yeah. Then the dogs would eat the rats. And yeah, the dogs that so so. There's also some of our things have unintended consequences, not just because someone else picks them up, but just in the in the first use. You know, we're doing this for this thing because this is this is harming a lot of people and a lot of animals. I mean, rats are disease ridden, mm-hmm. um, but then now we're killing our household pets. You know, yeah. and so. Um, so there's multiple layers, I think, to which which I give her credit again for a less than three hundred page book. There's she not. does put a lot in there and 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 still makes it accessible. So that that's I give her credit for that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um did I have another question? I don't think so. Have y'all ever had like an encounter with wildlife that you want to share that maybe was unexpected? I got, I got chased frostbite. by a deep- <laughs> <laughs> That was more Mother Nature, the weather, than uh, anyway. Sorry, I got chased by a deer. This I got is amazing. Chased by okay. a deer. I was walking home, and I guess it must have been mating season because they. I've always heard that deer like go the other way when you deer approached. Are, nope, that joker charged me. If it was a male, <laughs> scared. Have horns? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So males during mating season are the only non-docile deer deers. If it's not mating season or they're females, they'll come up and they'll hang out with you. Also, so. he was really fast. Like I'm yeah. glad oh, yeah. that, that he changed his mind because oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, Marcus has also been hit by a deer. That poor thing. Came, like Marcus, it was going across the road, mm-hmm. and Marcus was. Uh, it was the slowest hit in history <laughs> because he was like veering. I know the people can't see, but like they were, they kind of just like Marcus went to swerve and it just kind of clipped it on the corner. Oh. It was really sad. Yeah. But somebody who actually hunts came, like stopped and like came and checked on the deer, which was alive, and then eventually stood up and pranced off into the woods. So yeah, if it was a slow, slow, if it wasn't so bad, it might not have might not have been as damaging. Mm-hmm. Than a lot of those. Well, my my favorite deer stories. Again, I have a pack of deer at my house, and I have for several winters. By the way, I have some really good pictures. The last time we had a big snow, of the deer in the snow, it was really cute. But one night, I'm on my porch, and I went to go check, make sure my grill was off, and I see the deer, and they're not scared by me. And I'm like, hey, and so they're like, like, and they're even like turning their head. You know, like dogs turn their head because they could. I was like, oh man, this is cool. And then my little Westie <laughs> comes. Rah, 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 it scares them off. And so I was so mad at her that night. But uh, so that's my one is I was mad at the dog because she ran off my cool interaction with the deer. Yeah. I was also on a porch. They were down. So it was not, I wasn't like they weren't charging or anything. But anyway. My mom used to catch the copperheads that would come up from the creek in the neighborhood where I grew up. If like all the other moms in the neighborhood would call my mom. Because She's she like, she used to work for King's Dominion. And so oh. she actually worked a little bit with, I wouldn't say that she had any like qual- like degrees or anything like that but like she trained dolphins and she did the parrot shows and she worked in the animal Mm, nursery and so she wasn't afraid to go out and catch a copperhead (laughs) well that's why this is just a total sidebar but if you see it people are afraid of snakes but if you see a black snake or a king snake leave it alone because if you see a black snake or a king snake you're not gonna see copperheads we always have this like six foot what my mother is deathly afraid of snakes yeah and so she every time she sees one i'm like but it's keeping the copperheads away from you and the dog so like you've got to you know there's there's don't freak out hmm. anyway Good. sorry i'm sorry angelique's like i hate you people so much <laughs> no you're gonna hate me no, more i got a long list i asked you a question i want to know what about your animal encounters i've had bats in my house oh <gasps> You have, you know what I learned from um, the TikToks that if you have a bat in your house, that you might need to go get. Um, this is like ten years ago, though. Rabies shots I think yeah. because fine at this point. they have like yeah, I think you're good now. If it's been yeah. ten years, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> but it happened twice. I took my cats in to get like vaccinated. Yeah, good, good. But they never said anything to me. 
They so. well, I'm saying it now because <laughs> apparently, that. like their like little claws or whatever can do like microscopic cuts and mm-hmm. get it in there. So Ew. yeah, Ew. or teeth. I don't know. They're little body parts. All right, you ready for your <laughs> Kindle's you, notes? Are you ready? Ready. We got to figure out what these mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also watched the House with a Clock in the Walls. And that was really good. That's what we watched. The Jack Black movie. I love how our things all come full circle. We start with what we watched. We end with what we watched. All right. Um, One of her other books is called Bonk. And I think it's a missed opportunity because the title should have been Boink. (laughs) I think it's about reproduction. Yeah. Um, The... De, what is it called? The the two page where it's devoted to somebody. The book. What is it? Dedication. dedication? The dedication page says to Gus, Bean, and Winnie. Animals or children? Do yeah. You know? <laughs> Don't know. I'm thinking animals. I really hope there's not a, a child named Bean. <laughs> well, my my uh, my cousin yeah, was is named Riley Jean, and we call her Riley Bean, and so sometimes we do. Well, call that's her a nickname Bean. though. Yeah. But if it's a parent to a child. True. True. Um. Dum, da, da, da. Read the footnotes. Important. When did I become this person? This footnotes kind of person. Time to figure out. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, they don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was a difference between the spelling of mannequin for clothing and mannequin for medical training. That was interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the workstations in Canada aren't numbered, but rather named for beer. A Canadian joke. I think Andrew should vin- visit Canada. Uh, yeah, it's on my list. And there are less things one. that can kill you. Just not, so. Yes. Um, learning how a bear will maul a person is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Teeth to teeth, so they maul the face first. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So don't, don't, don't scream when you see a bear. She sets up scenes comically, uh, commenting some of the um, actors at the wart trainings are like Al Pacino and others are C-SPAN too. <laughs> yeah. The wart, the, the beginning, that was good. That was funny. Or the trainer pretending to be a predator lurking <laughs> lurking, and merely saying, I'm a bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Mary Roach says, I don't hunt, but I do enjoy taxidermy, and I no longer trust Mary Roach. <laughs> I think it's creepy. Um, if phrases such as world leader and moose science tickle your fancy, this is your book. I would never expect to hear some of these like phrases mm-hmm. and job titles that you're talking about. Um, dumpster diving is a gateway crime. I like that she anthropo- anthropo- anthropomorphizes <laughs> Ooh, animals. Um, even bears prefer brand name food. We learned I like this. that, yes. Yes. Um, the chapters are too long. I've become accustomed to James Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to like break that. Oh, I loved on page seventy one in response to um, how Delhi takes care better care of the animals than they do the senior citizens. <laughs> senior citizens. Senior citizens. <laughs> <laughs> um, the city's minister of animal husbandry announced that we're planning a unique coexistence program where elderly will be able to stay with the cows. <laughs> Please, someone make this a mockumentary. <laughs> like, can you imagine old people and cows? But I want them to have that. I want them to be Gladys. And I want them to have that accent. <laughs> all right. So the cow last night moved all night. It was just that's what I want. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, 1918 flu pandemic created the man hunting leopards in India. I hate to think what predators emerged from the 2020 COVID pandemic. Yeah. Hopefully, something really bizarre. <laughs> um. <laughs> Sometimes I didn't appreciate her humor because I felt like she was reaching. So, like, there was a scene where uh, she's talking to a guy and, like, he has striped mug and then he has a striped pencil cup. And then some other guy comes in with a striped shirt. And she was like, oh, man, it's all stripes up in here. And I'm like, who is that funny to? Like, what is that show? Gladys with the cow. That's what that's funny to. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. Sorry. The cougar chapter's better. I like Dellinger. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, dude, I really like the albatross um, chapter. I now also really like albatrosses mm-hmm. because they don't seem to give a flying. <laughs> <laughs> <Anything. Beep. laughs> cool cucumbers. They're unflappable is what she said in the book. I thought that yeah, was really that was clever. Cool. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, the book mentions Sully, the yeah. plane that landed in the Hudson. Fun fact, uh, my neighbor from my parents' neighborhood was on the plane. Oh, wow. Yep. Very cool. Good movie, too. Clint Eastwood movie. Tom Hanks. Sully. Good movie. Yep. Do we have that here? Yes, we do. Well, there you go. Deer strikes have happened on landing during takeoff and while taxiing. Obviously, no deer have been have struck planes at cruising heights. Less obviously, two animals struck planes that were parked. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. that and then good. I'll stop. I like that. <laughs> so I looked on the back of my little question sheet, and apparently I had notes here. And one of them is just weird. It says, end of chapter seven. Should I bring up the centaur cannibalism question here? Oh, I love you for oh, that. Yeah. I didn't though. So. <laughs> do you know? Do you know the centaur cannibalism question? No. Would you eat? It's, would you eat a centaur? Oh, oh. No. It's, no. It, is it? Would you eat a centaur? I thought it was. Is it cannibalism? Is it you, cannibalism? Is it eat cannibalism it? if you eat a centaur? centaur? Yeah. I'm not. Uh, Anjali and I had a very good conversation about did. this. Well, I'm glad no. you all did. Look at the time. We are we are getting long here. Let's it, it is. There you go, <laughs> listeners. Would you... Andrew just avoids the question. <laughs> All right. To close out the episode, I would like to promote one of the library's best resources, NC Live. NC Live provides access to an online collection of 1.6 billion full text articles, ebooks, streaming videos, digitized newspapers, language learning tools, and more. You can access NC Live through the library website, gasandlibrary.org, or through nclive.com. Dot org. All you need is your library card number. So if you want to do some research on some animals, I suggest NC Live. Um, all right, that's it for this episode of We're Booked Up. Fuzz, When Nature Breaks the Law by Mary Roach is available at the library and through the NC Digital Library with the Libby app. Let us know what you think of the book and what you think of what we think of the book. Just leave a comment at the off-the-shelf blog at gastonlibrary.blogspot.com or at gastonspeaks.podbean.com. Next episode's book will be Bright Lights, Big Christmas by Mary Kay Andrews. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.